Hello, I'm Atuba George and I'm so blessed to be bringing God's show to you today. Now, this is a new week and this is the last week of the month of June. And remember, at the beginning of this month, the Lord said, look, this month is a month of preparation. He's preparing you for the seasons that is coming ahead. Now, when we enter the next quarter, Things are, are going, things are going to begin to happen in a very strange manner. And as God's children, if you are not solid in His word, uh, you, uh, I pray that you will find God's mercy. Praise mm-hmm. God. Truly, you know, I pray that you will find God's mercy. Now, throughout this month, the Lord have been preparing us and and teaching us things about covenants. The Lord took us to this covenant subject because it's very important you understand the roots of every manifestation that you're expecting. If God says it's a month of preparation, how is he going to prepare you? By his word. He will give you his word. And that's what he's been doing with us. So that's why if you've not been following us from the beginning of the month, it's important that you, you, we have everything on YouTube. So, if you, if you don't follow us yet, or you've not subscribed to our channel yet, please do so. And then go from the beginning of the month and begin to listen to everything we've been talking about. Cause we've been taking it in bits and pieces. Now, everything combined will give you a good view of what we have been talking about. And I know that this week you're going to hear another dimension of these things that, um, I pray that God will give you an understanding heart because we're going to be delving into things that the church have talked less about. And, but then we're bringing you God's knowledge. Praise God. But before we go into that, can we make requests for our daily bread? Are you ready? Join me in faith right now and say with me, Father, I demand right now for my daily bread. It's coming to me in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise God. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Now we've been talking about God's covenant. His covenant. You know, our text is from First First Chronicles chapter sixteen and the, chapter sixteen and verse fifteen. And he says, "Remember His covenants forever, the word which He commanded for a thousand generations, the covenant which He made with Abraham." And his oath to Isaac and confirmed it to Jacob for a statute to Israel for an everlasting covenant. He's, David is speaking here. He says, remember his covenants. And I've been sharing different thoughts, um, in regards to his covenant. I'll show you something in Proverbs chapter four. Proverbs chapter four. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Verse 1, it says, Hear, my children, the instruction of a father, and give attention to no understanding. See, it says, give attention to no understanding. See, my prayer for you, you know, Paul prayed the same prayer, that the eyes of your understanding will be enlightened. And so you will know what is the hope of his calling in your life. There's a reason God called us to be saved. Do you know why he did that? Do you know the hope of all these things that we are doing? Do you know where it's all going to? There's a lot lot of wrong perspective. There's a lot of wrong ideas that we share thinking it is truth. Because we've been told certain things and we didn't check to know the foundation of those things. Even though we see them in the Bible, do we understand the foundation of these things? So David speaking to his son Solomon here. Now, if you read the book of Proverbs, I think from chapter one to chapter nine, where actually the words of David, Solomon was sharing the notes of the things his father taught him. Okay, okay, so that's why you hear me say these the words of David. You understand what I'm talking about? So he says, for now he says, I'll read it again from verse one. Hear my children, the instruction of a father, 
and give attention to no understanding. Give attention to no understanding. For I give you good doctrine. Do not forsake my law. You see that? I give you what? Good doctrine. Why did he call it good doctrine? I'm giving you a perspective that will bring you into a good understanding. See? And that's a pastor's job. A pastor's job is to give you good doctrine. Now, not just a doctrine that was received. Yes, we received a lot of good things, but it's our job to analyze these things and connect them by the Holy Spirit to the truth, to the real source. See? We don't just take things, you know, oh, this is what they said. And if you don't have perfect understanding of these things, we are going to be in trouble. Because when Satan attacks, you will not even know what foundation or ground to stand on. Just like I, I, I told you this, you know, throughout this month, I keep, I keep mentioning this, how the, the message of Titan was attacked by preachers. See? And what they didn't know is that they have been beaten by the serpent. The serpent beat them and they began to preach the message of the Antichrist. Attacking Titan is truly, I want you to listen to me. And you may not accept it today, but one day the Holy Spirit will give you understanding and you will know what I mean by what I'm saying. People who attack Titan are preaching the message of the Antichrist. Yes. They are preaching the message of the Antichrist. What, what does it mean, the message of the Antichrist? Just as the Antichrist. You're preaching a message that is anti-Christ. So you're not preaching what Christ is preaching. You're preaching against what Christ is preaching. Because I always show this challenge. There is no one that will say to you, the Holy Spirit taught him that it is wrong to give tithe or to pay tithe. There is no one that can be bold enough to say that because then the Holy Spirit never gave that message to anyone. That's number one. Number two, anyone who truly submits their mind to the Holy Spirit to teach them will realize how important tithing is. You know, um, I've said this many times in reference to what's um, a trending um, um, statement that um, that they are able to make. Uh, you know, he said, anyone who does not tithe will not go to heaven. And people just come out to attack him. I've learned. Even some honest ministers attacked him, say, no, if ministers who even who claim they believe in tithing even say no i think that's going too far i mean it doesn't mean if you don't pay tithing you're not good to him but what they fail to realize see when when you hear a statement i've learned that for many years now when you hear a statement don't be too quick to respond especially when one who has the holy ghost is speaking because sometimes even the person speaking may not understand the depth of what he's saying. So it will take the Holy Spirit to interpret that thing the person said for you to get a clear picture of what he said. So when 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 I remember when that everybody made that statement, and I was taken aback, like ah, <laughs> whoa, uh, I don't think I would say this. <laughs> it's good. Until the Lord. But then I took time to examine the statements through the Holy Spirit. That's what I do. I've, I've been so blessed by doing that. I'm telling you the truth. So I, I, I like, but why would he make that kind of statement? And I began to talk to the Lord about it. I said, Lord, this man is anointed. Why would he make this kind of statement? What, what, what did he see? Is he trying to encourage people to Pay tight, you know, as preachers, sometimes we, we can go overboard in trying to do that. And then the Lord spoke to me and said, but he is right. That's exactly the way he spoke to me. He said, but he is right. I said, what? Non-titers will not make heaven. 
I see, that's when the Lord told me that anyone who doesn't tithe or anyone who's teaching against tithing is walking by the spirit of the Antichrist. Now that's when the Lord told me that. I didn't hear that from anybody. Because when he explained it to me, I like, whoa. You know, and now I, I, I began to feel like, does even that they are able to understand the import of that statement? How deep and how true it is? So, to make heaven, you've got to be led by the Spirit of God. If you are not led by the Spirit of God, forget heaven. You can't. Because the job of the Holy Spirit is to prepare you. Now, when we say enter heaven, we're talking about enter into God's perfection. See, so now when, when the Holy Spirit is not doing the work of preparing you today, how then would you be fit? Some of you just think on that last day, you hear a drop a pom 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 pom, and whoo, and then you know, some people can do last week. Hey, 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 God, please have mercy, have mercy, and God do not take it. Hey, the job of the Holy Spirit today is to make us fit for the kingdom. And so everything he's doing in our life. So if he's not doing that in you today, don't think he's going to give you a crash course on the last day. Jesus said, narrow is the way that leads to life. So there is life. Okay. And then he says, narrow is the way that leads to it. And the job of the Holy Spirit is cut you into shape so that you can fit into that path. If he's not cutting into shape today, you stand the risk of not even finding that part. Even though you think you're enjoying your life, you will think you're in church, you think you're doing the right thing. But remember, Jesus said on that day, many. He didn't say some. He said, not everyone that says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter into the kingdom of heaven, but those who do the will of my father who is in heaven. How do you know the will of my father or, or of his father to do it? The only way we will know his will or the will of his father is through the Holy Spirit. So if you don't know that the will of the, of the father is that you tight, if you don't know it and he's not leading you to prepare, he's not leading you in tightening. I want you to understand. If you've been following me from, from the beginning of this one, you will understand that tithing is a very, very vital and important thing in the kingdom of heaven. As it is on earth. You understand what I'm talking about? If you've not seen that yet, then you're not understanding what I'm sharing with you. So how important tithing is, and you who are in God's kingdom like you think, I have no, I'm not, you're not being led by the Holy Spirit, not just to know it, but to participate in it. I dare say, you might not even be part of those that he's preparing for the kingdom. And if you're not part of those that are being prepared for the kingdom, how will you make it? Oh, we are already in the kingdom. Okay, keep your thought to yourself. If you think we're there yet, then keep your thoughts to yourself. If you don't believe that Jesus is coming again, if you don't believe that he's coming to judge all things, if you don't believe that every one of us are being prepared today for a, a glorious life, then I'm sorry, we're not walking on the same path. If you think all we have is all there is, if you think we have received the Holy Ghost and there is nothing else to look forward to, if you think we are all in the kingdom that Jesus was referring to and there is nothing more to look forward to, then I'm sorry, we are not talking the same gospel. But if you feel that the job of the Holy Spirit in us today is to prepare us to be fit. 
I shared with you last week. Jesus will still check. Even him said, not everyone that says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter. Now, before they began to call him Lord, because Apostle Paul said, no man can say that Jesus is Lord, but by the Holy Spirit. Now, Jesus is saying, it's not everyone that says, Lord, Lord, that will enter into the kingdom. He wasn't talking about getting born again. Please understand me. Study the book of Revelation. Jesus came and he was talking to the churches. I speak to those of you who erroneously think in your mind, as long as you have given your life to Jesus Christ by responding to the altar call, one saved, you, there is nothing more to be done. Remember, in the book of Revelation, Jesus sent letters. He sent words to the seven churches. Seven churches, not seven nations. Seven churches. He addressed them as churches. And one of them, he said, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If anyone will hear my voice and open, who was he referring to? The church. So he is standing at the door of the church and he is knocking. And he says, anyone who hears my voice and opens, I will come in and sup with him. Anyone. The church. Anyone. He referred to another church. He said, I will spew you out of my mouth if you don't take a stand. The church, they are saved. They are saved. He spoke to another church. He says, he that overcometh, I will give of him from the tree of life. The church, he was speaking to the church. He didn't say, I will give every member of the church. He said, I will give to the ones who overcomes. That should give you some wisdom. Except you want to tell us that the book of Revelation is a lie. Put it aside. People remove scriptures now just to drive a narrative. But the scriptures are for us to believe and understand. Not to twist it to suit our narrative. Brothers and sisters, Jesus said it's not everybody that says, Lord, Lord, that will enter. Revelation proves it. Go read all the things he said to the seven churches. There was always a condition attached. It means if you don't comply, you will be lost. If you don't comply, you will not enter. Be guided. That's what David was telling Solomon. I will give you good doctrine. I will give you good doctrine. My prayer for you, sincerely speaking, is that you will not become lascivious and neglect the most important things. But that your heart will be open to seek the Lord in truth. For he is truth. And that you will find him that is true. And let him begin to guide you into all truth, just like Jesus said. The Holy Spirit is here on earth. He's in us. His job is to guide us into all truth. So the things I teach you, I'm not teaching you so that you just sit down and accept my words. I'm bringing you knowledge and good understanding. But the Spirit of God in you is the one that will confirm the words that I'm speaking to you. Don't lock your heart because you have received a false doctrine or wrong doctrine. I say, what, I, what is he talking about? I don't want to. Please, I beg of you. I beg of you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Open your heart. Open your heart. I always say this. It is better that you hear something new and take it to the Holy Spirit and let the Holy Spirit tell you it is false. At least you have received words from him. Than for you to shut your ears from hearing the truth because you think it is false. Don't neglect knowledge. Don't neglect it. But save every knowledge through the Holy Spirit. That's what I always tell you. 
let every new thing you hear or let everything you, you don't understand be an opportunity for you to go to the Lord. You will never go wrong. You can never go wrong with the Holy Spirit. As long as you hear his voice. And I tell you this truth. As a believer, that's the most important thing in your life. The ability to hear the voice of God. If you don't hear that voice, you are not a believer yet. You are not. I'll tell you the truth. You are not. A believer voice. For Jesus even said, my sheep hears my voice. My sheep hears my voice. I pray the Lord will help you. And as you open your ears to hear him, this is not the time to be excited. Oh, we, we have a new teaching. Oh, this grace message. Hey, there is no special message. The gospel is all encompassing. So there's nothing like grace message. The only message that exists is the message of our Lord Jesus Christ. And it's all encompassing. Calm down. Listen to the truth. And may the Lord help you and teach you. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. I pray for you. You that is listening to me. I pray that you will not be lost. You will not be led astray. That the Spirit of God will arrest you. Just on time. And bring you into the place of truth. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. God bless you. I'll see you tomorrow. Bye.